everyone. It is November 30th, 2021. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. And also, happy birthday to Harp Tuesday because 11 years ago, on November 30th of 2020, of 2010, I uploaded the very first episode of Harp Tuesday. So 11 years. Um, and today, what I'm going to do is I want to talk about a particular pattern, this idea of being able to play four and two with three and one still on the string, or playing one and three with two and four still on the string. And specifically, because it's, uh, I use it quite a bit in uh, my piece Nordic Spaces, so I just published this. Um, I really, really like this piece. I really like how it turned out. And it's not a particularly hard piece. I would say definitely sort of intermediate level, except there is a section that uses a lot of this this pattern. So today I want to just talk about how to play that. And so I'm going to zoom you in here. Let's there we go. Awesome. So this pattern, being able to play four and two while keeping the third finger and the thumb on the string, if you've never done it before, it's the type of thing that can feel absolutely impossible. You can sit there and it feels as if you can't even get started because you just don't have any sense of what sort of signals to, to send to get this to happen. So the very first thing I would recommend, if this is something that's new to you, is to practice going playing four. That should be easy enough, right? So let's see, maybe I'll choose, I'm going to grab something a little bit lower down. Um, I'll grab a root position E chord because I'm in the key of E flat but it could be anything, could be smaller shapes, could be probably not larger shapes, but let's grab this. So we should be able to play four, right? And then two, even with one and three on the string, that's not too bad, hopefully. And if it is, just working on that. We're trying to close normally, right? So we're not forcing the finger closed, not so much that it would hurt the top of the hand or cause any stress there, but that we're playing firmly enough that the finger might gently swing, touch the palm just with the momentum of playing. And so to get used to this idea of, okay, it's these two fingers that are going to play and three and one are staying on the string. And we might do the opposite, go Maybe that requires just a little bit of practice to get, again, to isolate and just be able to play two. Well, four and three and the thumb are on the string. And then we might try to go a little bit faster. Or, and I think this is maybe a little bit harder, but... And so just doing that, suddenly it may start to feel, oh, okay, this is possible, right? This is something that's possible to do. And then trying to play them both at the same time. Now, another exercise we can do then is to try this, try keeping the thumb, in this case on the E, placing four and two, but don't place the third finger and just practice The sound and feel of four and two getting played at exactly the same time. I think almost everyone, when they when they do this and start working on it, the tendency is to go to try to play them at the same time, but to have four happen before the second finger. It's much harder to be going to play to play too too early. To, so to help us feel and hear what it sounds like to play two and four together. It can be really helpful just to try this. Of course, we could also try this. But I think having the thumb there is not really, doesn't make it that much harder or easier. If it does make it easier not to have the thumb there, then yes, this is a great practice. But if it doesn't, then might as well have the thumb there. And of course, once we do that, 
we're ready to play this, and this is just a normal chord, the same as we would be used to playing. And so it's it's both a normal close, but also maybe thinking a little bit of a push type of close where you're pushing a little bit, pushing down. When I say push, I just kind of mean pushing uh, down on the string at a slight angle towards the soundboard of the harp. Of course, the same thing applies for the left hand. You can't see this angle very easily, but you would practice the same. The same idea with the left hand. Now, later in the piece, there is also a few spots, just to keep things interesting, where the hands, one hand is going down like this. One, three, two, four. later the right hand goes down I'll demonstrate with the right hand I'll go ahead and grab this actual shape that's getting played in, in Nordic spaces which is C E G A all four notes and again this might feel impossible might feel easier or harder than playing two and four but you can work into it This is also an interesting one where I think practicing both with just the fourth finger staying on the string and also with just the second finger staying on the string. I think both of those feel a little bit easier than having both two and four on the string and so again are great ways to, to practice and then again it's, 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 it's a little bit harder in the sense that instead of just going the same motion with both fingers. The third finger is closing, but the thumb is wrapping around the finger, right? So it's not, we want to avoid kind of a pinch or a feeling that this finger needs to go way up like this. But at the same time, I'm not trying to, again, force that finger down closed aggressively. It's just, just like this. And, and so this whole technique, I think, is something where you can actually potentially get some really quick progress in the sense of it can feel impossible one day, you work on it a little bit, and you come back the next day and suddenly those neural pathways have been established and it becomes much easier. So it's not to say that it's easy, but you, yeah, give it a try and you might be surprised at how it can go from feeling utterly impossible to feeling actually quite doable. So hope that was interesting, hope that was useful, and I will see you in two weeks' time. Cheers.